Good morning. This is Monday, November 6th, the year 2000. This is Barbara Slavin of the Morse Institute Library, and I'm interviewing Mr. Mitchell Haddad. Uh, welcome, Mr. Haddad, Thank to you. our uh, Veterans Oral History Program at uh, Natick, Massachusetts. I wanted to ask you, what is your address? Natick, mm -hmm. Mass. And may I ask you what your age is? Age is uh, 77. 77. Do you have any children? Yes, I have four children mm -hmm. and 12 grandchildren. Excellent. Where were you born? Natick, on East Central Street. And were you raised here? Yes, I was. Can you tell me what Natick was like when you were growing up? Oh, it was a quiet old farm town, and uh, things have changed uh, tremendously in the past 70-some-odd uh, years. How have they changed? Oh, God. I mean, great improvement, and especially in the last few years with all these uh, new buildings, uh, the Morse Institute and Library and uh, the town hall, the fire station, and the police station, just unbelievable, because I love Natick, and, and I'll always be here. Mm. And uh, it's a nice, uh, quiet town. And the only thing that uh, surprises me is that uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, people, the, uh, um, oh God, the, uh, the people in the area here have not increased in the past several years. Mm. It's been always around 30, 31,000. And uh, it's been that for years. Mm. And uh, I love it. Is there anything about the old days that you miss? Well, the old days was Casey's Diner here, because Casey's are right up the street. They used to have an ice cream parlor here. Uh, this town has changed uh, mm. tremendously, yeah. tremendously. What was your, what is your family background? Uh, their nationality? Yes. They're uh, Syrian Orthodox. Ah. When and where did you enter the military? 1943, and I was drafted, and I uh, was inducted in Boston, Mass. Mm -hmm. And I was actually I was drafted in the Army, and they gave me a choice of the Marines and the Navy, so I chose the Navy. And then the Navy needed Seabees for construction, and I joined the Seabees, and that's the construction battalion of the U.S. Navy. And how did you happen to choose the Seabees? Well, my background, uh, you know, in the construction, I, I knew a little bit about uh, 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 farming and all that stuff. I was, I was, in fact, I was born on a farm. So I did a lot of uh, building repairs and stuff like that, and I thought I'd get into the, uh, they needed at the time, they needed construction, so I, uh, I joined the Seabees. Did any of your family or friends join the military? Uh, my family joined, yeah. My brothers, my three brothers joined in the Army. They were, all three were Army. Two were uh, Korean vets and one was World War II. And uh, that was it. Where were you sent for basic training? I was sent to uh, 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 go, uh, Newport, no, it wasn't Newport, it was uh, uh, Virginia, Camp Perry, Virginia. Mm -hmm. And what was that like? That was rough. That was rough. We were trained by the Marines. Mm -hmm. So the Marines, uh, when you got Marine training, it was, it was tough. And not only tough, it was hot. The time I was down there, it was in the summertime. I mean, the heat was just unbearable. And then you're with all your uh, uh, all your equipment on there, and it was just uh, it was it was a dry season too. But uh, we survived it. Did you get the same basic training as 
uh, all other Marines, or did you get special training no, for Seabees? No, we were trained by the Marines, uh, and it was under their uh, their jurisdiction, and it was it was rough. But uh, the training was for uh, uh, more or less fighting. Mm -hmm. You know, the Marines didn't train us for construction. Mm -hmm. We got into construction afterwards. And how did you get into construction afterwards? Did you have well, from there we went to uh, Davisville, Rhode Island, mm -hmm. and that's where the uh, they broke us up into uh, construction units, mm -hmm. and uh, then we took the the uh, necessary training for construction. I got into the heavy equipment uh, field mm -hmm. with bulldozers and cranes and stuff like that. And then from Davisville, we went to uh, Gulfport, Mississippi. Mm -hmm. And that's where we did all the heavy equipment. They mm -hmm. taught us how to graders and bulldozers and stuff like that. What was the first word you used before bulldozers? Great. Uh, graders. Graders? Graders, yeah, you know, okay. the graders, anything in the construction right. field. Did you develop any close friendships during oh, training? Oh, sure, oh, sure. A lot of people. Yeah. I had, uh, in fact, uh, uh, there was fellas uh, that were uh, uh, right from Wellesley in oh, my yeah? office. Yeah, nice. Uh, we, we were very fortunate. A lot of people from Massachusetts, quite a bit. Yeah. Newton, uh, Holyoke, uh, uh, all those areas. They, there was quite a few Massachusetts guys. Are you still in touch with them? No, they passed away. Oh. Yeah, unfortunate. But we do have, uh, I started a reunion in 1988 uh -huh. for our construction unit. And so far we've done 12, uh, 12 reunions, annual reunions. Uh -huh. Yeah, and I tell you, it's great to see the, the, uh, the guys from the outfits, because they're a lot older and, and uh, <clears throat> a lot of them have passed on. But uh, it was just great to be with them again. Yeah. And like I say, I started that in 88, and uh, every year we go to a different uh, state. Uh, this past year was Buffalo. Uh, next year is uh, Louisville, Kentucky. And every year we go, and uh, the, the uh, members and their wives come, and uh, just, we just have a great time, uh -huh. just, to be, just to be together. So within your, you were heavy. You were in heavy equipment. Yes. Right. It was, were you in a specialty within that, or is that was that? Would you say no, that was your specialty? No. The the uh, it was uh, 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 operating the bull, bulldozers and cranes and, yeah. and shovels and anything in the construction field. Yeah. In order for me to get my <clears throat> my uh, rank, see all our ranks were frozen. Mm -hmm. Okay. In order for me to get a second-class machinist mate, uh, I had to go into construction. Why were the ranks frozen? Because they were all filled. You see, they have a quota, right. and uh, you have to wait. Either you take a different field, or you stay and wait for your, uh, mm -hmm. for your, uh, is this fly in our, uh? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he wants equal time, I yeah, guess. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, we either, uh, uh, in order for us to get into our, uh, to get a rank of our field, mm -hmm. we had to wait. So this way here, uh, heavy equipment was available, so I went to school, heavy equipment school in Mississippi. They taught us how to operate all this heavy equipment, and uh, I enjoyed it. It was great. Did the Army... Uh, Navy. Davy, I'm sorry, I should have said the military, prepare you for the cultural differences you were faced, you faced, for example, in Mississippi? In what respect? Well, you probably were with people of different uh, ethnic backgrounds. You oh, sure. Oh, sure. And were you prepared for the difference? Oh, sure. Okay. And then going overseas, uh, that was rough. We got into a ship collision oh. out in the Caribbean, yeah. And uh, we had a 15-ship convoy, and... Uh, Somehow or other, one of the ships lost their rudder and uh, veered off course and hit us on the starboard side, punched a hole in the ship. We lost, uh, I think it was two men we lost, 
and we had quite a few casualties. And we had to go back to Norfolk, Virginia wow. to uh, have the ship repaired. Uh, we lost all our clothing, all the water came into the compartment. We had to seal off the compartments. And uh, I was very, very fortunate that I survived that because I was going up the, the uh, ladder to take a shower and that's when that ladder broke off, that's when the ship hit. Ladder broke off and it unfortunately hit one of, the, one of my friends I was talking to and uh, he was just oh. crushed and uh, that was the saddest part of... Mm. Uh, well, do you remember the name of your ship? USS Orizaba. USS what? Orizaba. Okay. And what ship hit you? That was ship a trans you? The ship that hit us, funny thing is, they had CBs on it too. I don't know the name of the ship. I, right. I have records of yeah. it at home. But, uh, and it was a new ship. It's just, uh, mm -hmm. like I said, it was a 15 ship, mm -hmm. ship convoy and, and, the, fifth, and the, the ships going overseas so as to not get hit by a, by a torpedo, they change courses. Mm -hmm every intervals, see? In yes. other words, they don't stay side by side. And we had the destroyer escorts on the, either side and, uh, you know, to watch out for us. And like I said, we were on a ship, uh, a transport ship. Was that, what year was that? 1944. 1944. So that was your first trip or attempted trip That overseas. was the only trip I took overseas. Right. And we stayed in, uh, we went to the South Pacific, we went to the Panama Canal, mm -hmm. we, that's, we stayed there for just one day. And uh, then we went to, uh, we went right into Numia. Okay. So let's just backtrack to Norfolk, you went back to Norfolk because we of the We had the ship repaired. Right, and, and so let's take, let's take it from there, then you shipped out again. We shipped out again yeah. and... Uh, what was we, your trip like? The, the, second, the, the second trip was fine, it yeah. was good. The only, only mishap we had there, we ran into a typhoon. Oh. And uh, our ship was like a tin can floating on the water. Oh. It was something that you never want to experience, believe me, oh. uh, because uh, I, if you ask me today, uh, how were we thrown around from side to side, it's unbelievable. And it's lucky because uh, there was a lot of injuries from the, from the uh, bobbling around, but uh, we survived it. And uh, uh, it was like I said, the waves were covering the ship. That's how big they were. Amazing. But uh, except we, for the storm, what was the trip like? Was it? It was good. It was good. We were on with the uh, Marines. Uh, there was Marines on the ship with us, and uh, I. Uh, found out that it's better to work with the with the crew of the ship because you get better uh, you get fresh water showers mm -hmm. and you get better meals so I worked in the bakery in the in the uh, with the crew and uh, that's why I said I was going up to take a fresh shower when that uh, uh -huh. mishap happened you say you, I think you indicated you were zigzagging to avoid uh, sonar. Yeah, they change radar. intervals. Right, and that, would that be Japanese submarines? Uh, oh, yeah, was, yeah, yeah, we're yeah. in the South Pacific. Right, sure. so it would be Japanese submarines and they're either radar or sonar that would have tracked you if you had gone. Uh, exactly, okay. exactly. So where was your first port of call once you were in the Pacific? Uh, we hit the, uh, the Panama first, Panama uh, Canal. Oh. And uh, then we went on to Bora Bora, that's one of the islands. And what did you do with the Panama Canal? Just uh, went through, that's all. Oh, went okay. through the, uh, yeah. That was an experience, going through yeah. the... What was that like? Oh, that was just fantastic. When the ship goes and then they open up the, uh, uh, the channels there, mm -hmm. the, they fill one up, the ship rises, or if it's going the other way, the mm -hmm. ship drops down and you go into stages. Took us a uh, full day to go through the canal. Mm -hmm. And that was, that, was, that was an experience, that was good. I enjoyed that. And then we went to, uh, the, 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 we stopped at Bora Bora, I guess, I don't know whether it was to refuel or what, but we did stop there and that was an experience to see all the natives uh, 
uh, swimming around out there we're look, looking for coins. We'd flip them coins. Mm -hmm. We'd flip them uh, pennies, and they said, "No, no, no. They wanted, <laughs> they wanted, they wanted the, uh, they wanted nickels, silver. and they wanted the silver, right?" <laughs> And then uh, where to after that? Then after that, we went into uh, uh, Numia, into the nickel docks. That's where they, they had nickel down there. That was one of their primary uh, uh, sources down there was nickel. They had nickel mines. And what did you do in Numia? In Numia, I ran a power station, uh, electricity. I had these uh, generators, and I was in charge of uh, making sure with that the the, uh, all the halls and everything, the buildings had electricity. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did. And how long were you there? Two years. What was your life like there? Uh, lonesome. Mm -hmm. It was long. We were in a valley and uh, it was, uh, we missed, I mean, I missed my family and everybody, but uh, we, it was something we had to do and we did it. And uh, we, uh, like I said, we, we built quite a few airfields there, uh, the construction part of it. And uh, I like, I guess the, uh, uh, the heavy equipment field was all taken care of, so they asked me to go into uh, uh, the, the power generators, generating power for the buildings. And that's what I did. Did you ever come under attack? No, no. We were fortunate on that. Uh, of course, we did have Japanese uh, uh, prison camps on the island. And there's one thing that I will never forget is I saw a native walking down the uh, the village down there, dragging his leg, and I just couldn't understand why. He, and it was a huge leg. And I couldn't understand why he was dragging the leg instead of, in other words, walking along. I got up close to him and he had elephantitis. Oh. From the, the bottom of the knee, the base of the knee down, it was the actual shape of an elephant's leg. Oh. And I later found out it was elephantitis. And that was, that was just, uh, Oh, it just got to me, and you know? I just couldn't couldn't understand why that person, that poor person, was suffering from that disease, mm -hmm. and he had to live with it. It's it was either amputating that leg, or just living with it, and it was the shape of an elephant's oh, leg. Terrible. But uh, and of course the natives, they, they, I used to watch them. They, they were all uh, with their different uh, uh, ways of living, their dances and all that stuff. That was all interesting. Did it you? was, yeah, Numir is a French colony. Yeah. It, was, uh, it, was, uh, con it was regulated by the French, and they were French-speaking people. But they had, they had Tonkinese, they had Javanese, they had Japanese, they had all different other nationalities there. But uh, the primary language there was French. Did you have a chance not only to observe them, but to socialize with the natives? Oh, sure. Oh, sure. The, the people were very nice. Yeah. Very nice. They, they appreciated the fact of us being there and, and, you know, and trying to help them, trying to help the other countries win that war. And they were very good to us. Very good. What was the weather like? Hot. Yeah. I mean hot. Never had, of course, over there the weather's uh, just like uh, Hawaii, year-round, right. hot weather. And uh, we built our own tents. We built, actually, we built our own, we built our bunks mm -hmm. ourselves. We'd put the drawers and everything under the bunk because we were limited on space. Uh, we went down to the... Uh, uh, repair department where they repaired the planes and we got the uh, the big rubber tubes mm -hmm. and then we slit those and that's what was our mattress that was our spring for the mattress mm -hmm. excuse me we took uh, frames and made it out of wood and we put the rubber strips crisscross it and that was our uh, that was our spring for the mattress 
And, uh, you know, you try to make it as, you try to make your living there as pleasant as possible. So don't forget, you you went with three guys, some of the tents were four guys, and, you know, four uh, men in a tent, and uh, you had to live with them and, uh, and make the best of it, that's all. And we did that, and I ran into a lot of good friends, and uh, my job was to serve the country, and we did that. Come back, and I, I came back, and uh, it was a question of whether I should, you know, after I served my three years, whether I had enough points to get out, and our, our business was to turn in the points, which mm -hmm. was 25, and get out. Right. And I had enough points, and I got up. Actually, I made a mistake. I should have stayed in because oh. <laughs> I would have enjoyed it a lot. Of uh, I would have uh, actually. I was. I was asked to go to the uh, uh, submarine uh, to a submarine base in San Diego, and uh, I would have. I would have been able to uh, go up another notch. Make the make the. Uh, machinist made first class, and uh, I said, no, 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 I want to get out. So when I was here in Boston, I was on, I served with the Navy Shore Patrol. I was on that while we were, you know, until I got discharged. And uh, it was good. It was a good experience, but it was good to be back home. Yeah. And I wanted to ask you, getting back to Anumia, uh, what was the food like? We had, well, our food was good. Yeah. It was, of course, we had good cooks and the food was great. And uh, we had a lot of uh, steak and potatoes from the French down there. We'd always go to their uh, little uh, diners and oh, whatever they had there. But uh, the food from the service was good. We really, uh, we had all the top, uh, top uh, uh, choices of food. And could you tell me what a typical day would be like, or if there was such a thing? Well, I was on, we were on three shifts. It's either the, the day shift, the, uh, the swing shift, or the, the grave shift, which mm -hmm. is 11 to 7 in the morning. And that I wasn't too pleased with, but mm -hmm. that's what you had to do. Mm -hmm. And we worked that with, with a group, you know, and we set it up the way we wanted, and uh, we had to do it. You do what you have to do. Right. That's it. Did you get letters from home? Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, plenty of letters and and uh, the one of the one of the uh, mates I was with was from Rochester, mm -hmm. and he was a uh, metalsmith. And we'd take all these fifty millimeter shells and make all kinds of lamps and oh. oh yeah and then we'd get down and we'd get this uh, uh, the seashells all uh, uh, beautiful seashells and we'd make uh, uh, candles and stuff out of them you know candle holders yeah. out of the 50 millimeter uh, shells and it was it was quite an experience what else did you do for recreation well I tell you I I, I had the the end of the war, when the war was over, just before that, I was going to Australia on vacation. Mm -hmm. I got a leave to go to Australia. Mm -hmm. And that is the only part that I wish I'd gone. But the war was over, so. Yeah. Uh, uh, where did you go after Numia? Come home. What about New Caledonia? Is that that was the same part of it? Okay. Yeah. Numia is the ta is the right. village. Okay. New Caledonia is the island. And what about Bora Bora, which is Bora Bora is one of the islands before oh, that. Okay. Yeah, these are the islands we stopped at. Can you tell me uh, if you took a snapshot of the place uh, Numia when you arrived versus two years later? Would you see a big difference in the way it looked visually? I tell you the truth. At this last this last. Uh, Reunion we went to. Uh, someone had a, a new a current picture a current uh, yeah picture of Numia, mm -hmm. and it's unbelievable the way that place is built up. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you the truth, I would if it wasn't so costly, 
I would go there in a heartbeat. Oh, really? I would. In fact, a few, quite a few of the other guys would like to go to. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see how the that place is built up. Mm -hmm. I'd like to see the improvements in that. And mm -hmm. from the pictures that I saw, it's uh, it was unbelievable. How would you describe the terrain? Uh, like, was it jungle-like? Hilly. hilly. Yeah. Okay. A lot of hilly. Do you feel that the or your officers gave you good leadership? Very good. Yeah, the officers, in fact, some of them uh, came to the reunion. Oh, that's great. Yeah, yeah, they were uh, chiefs. Uh, the lieutenant couldn't make it. He was, uh, I guess, because of illness. But uh, no, they were good. They were very good. And uh, some of the guys down there, uh, they built their own boats. Mm -hmm. And they just, they just, you know, they had time to kill, and they, they built small boats, and they wanted to go out on the island. Uh, the <laughs> some of the some of the uh, the guys used to take because uh, they wanted something to drink, mm -hmm. uh, you know, something stronger than the beer and <laughs> stuff. Because all we could get is over there is beer, and they wanted something stronger than that. And uh, I don't know how they did it, but they got the torpedo. They called it torpedo juice, <laughs> and. I, one day I said, well, let me just try that and see what it tastes like. Oh. I tell you, that, that knocked you for a loop. And that was the juice that they put into some chemical they put into torpedo. They take it. In order to get the, the, the poison out of it, they'd have to boil it. They'd go up in the hills and they'd boil it. How they did it, I don't know. But when you mix it with orange juice, it doesn't taste bad <laughs> until it hits you. And then... And then you're gone. I was uh, just did a little reading about the Seabees before our interview, and it did. They, one writer said that their Seabees are known for their creative solutions. Right. So that I think that's an. Well, that's where the can do that. comes can in. Can do. Yeah. That's your can motto. Do. Right. That's your in other words, it was nothing we couldn't do. Yeah. Nothing that we take. We'd get on a, an island, and and uh, if it uh, if it's not there, we'd build it. And uh, that was our motto, and we had a lot of talent on in our uh, organization. I mean, men that uh, would come up with creations that was unbelievable. What were your greatest challenges when you were there? Well, uh, the uh, I made some little gadgets. I made uh, I made a uh, uh, with the help of my uh, metalsmith. I made a lamp out of a uh, 50 millimeter. Mm -hmm. I hooked it all up and uh, uh, put a lamp on the top of it, put a shade on top, and uh, made a nice lampshade out of uh, all out of uh, uh, shells. <laughs> and it was nice. Who were your closest friends? Who were they? A yeah. lot of them. Yeah. They were all of them. Yeah. As I told you, from Massachusetts, from uh, uh, the man that lived with me, my mate was from Rochester. Another one was from uh, Wisconsin, and uh, uh, there was just just a great bunch of guys. They all, everyone looked after one another. Mm. Always protected one another because you know the natives. You can never know what uh, they may do, but uh, mm. we didn't encounter any. Uh, any bad uh, uh, people over there. How did you f follow the war in other areas? How did you hear about how the war was going? In through Europe? the bulletins. Yeah, through the uh, bulletin Stars and Stripes. Stars and, and Stripes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And plus the fact that uh, uh, my family would send us, uh, you know, all kinds of, of course, everything, a lot of the stuff was censured. Right. And even we send everything out, it was censured. So we got to be very careful, careful in our in what we say about the war and where we were and so forth. And and you have to respect them on that part, you know. Were you able to hear music? Uh, oh sure, oh sure. Uh, oh yeah. How, how did you hear it? Well, we 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 had these little crystal. We used to make up these little uh, uh, radios out of crystal. Mm -hmm. We take the crystal and oh, hook yeah. it up, and yeah, and uh, we'd get the music from the yeah. village there, and uh, it was just something to keep you going. Did you ever pick up the 
uh, Japanese propaganda, no. like Tokyo Rose? No, we or didn't, that like wasn't that, that strong. Oh. <laughs> no, it wasn't that strong. When you say you socialized with, uh, could, were able to socialize with the natives, were the men actually dating some of the local women? Was that Well, yeah, that was I told you it was French girls. The French, right, girls. French girls. I went out with French girls yeah. down there. They're very yeah. nice, yeah. very pleasant. Uh, oh, yeah. I mean, there was, uh, the natives were, actually, they were, they were black. Yeah. But we stayed away from the natives because there was too much of the, uh, uh, you know, disease going right. around there and all that. But the French people in, in, in the town of Dumia, yeah. it was a regular town, yeah. you know, and uh, we'd go to the dances and all that, and we'd dance with the French girls. And at the time, I wasn't tied in with anybody, right. so uh, I had no, uh, no guilt of any right. kind, you know. <laughs> And they were very pleasant, very good, and we left. Uh, uh, another thing I had, I hated to do when I left is we had to destroy all our equipment. Oh. Yeah, all the, the bulldozers and cranes and, and uh, all the heavy equipment that I did operate, we had to put it on barges and run it out to sea and uh, put it in gear and jump off. And the reason for destroying it? It's because of the economy back here. If we brought all that equipment back, we'd, I'd sit there and I'd take all the, uh, the 35 millimeter cameras that ran our, the USO shows and all that down there in the movies, uh, we had to smash them up with sledgehammers. I, I, I don't understand the relationship between the economy and why you had to destroy the, the equipment. Well, if we, if, if you brought, if we brought all, if, or right. let's, let's say if the, if the, the government, uh, the Navy or whatever it is brought all that equipment back here, what's going to happen to the economy here? Mm -hmm. They're going to be out of work. Right. So to keep the economy going, they and, they and we didn't give anything to the French. They didn't want to give anything to the French people there. Huh. So they'd rather destroy it, which, which we did. Yeah. I'd take there and I'd it, it, tell you it broke my heart. To, Take a sledgehammer and break everything up huh. and destroy it rather than bring it back here, which I understood later on was for economic reasons. Yeah. And, you know, and I, I could see that because it's going to put these poor people, like, say if I come back and I went into and I was in that field, and they'd say, they'd tell me, look, at, you're, out of, you're out of work. We mm -hmm. have, we have an abundance of uh, stock. Yeah. Did any USO sh shows go to oh, the sure. island? Oh, sure. Oh, yeah. Could you tell oh. me about them? Oh, yeah. Well, you got uh, Bob Hope. And, yeah. uh, Did you oh, see him yourself? Oh, sure. Yeah. Oh, how, was, sure. how was he? Oh, he was great. Yeah. Bob Hope. I, uh, chummed, I happened to go out with this one French girl, and uh, she asked me if she could bring her, because I, they used to give us the Jeep or the, mm -hmm. uh, the uh, weapons carrier to take out for, you know, for the evening. They'd allow you to do that. You have to put your name in advance, you know. And the girl I was going out with, she says, is it okay if I, because she called me Mickey, is it okay if I bring my, my uh, sister and her boyfriend? I says, sure. I says, yeah, you're welcome, you know, I had room in the carrier there and it uh, turned out to be Jackie Cooper Oh! <laughs> and I uh, took pictures of him and, and I tell you he was a super guy and he was putting on the show down there yeah. and uh, uh, met all uh, you know all these other uh, movie stars and all that. Do you remember was, the names of the actresses you saw? Uh, Offhand, I draw yeah. a blank. Uh, there was, uh, of course, Martha Ray was one of them. Oh, okay. Martha yeah. Ray and uh, uh, I told you Bob Hope. Uh, mm -hmm. um, Dorothy Lamour. Dorothy like, Lamour, oh, right? There? Oh, yeah, yep, yeah. yep. Oh, there were a lot of those. Uh, yeah. Uh, if you name them off, I could tell you. Yeah. But uh, there was there was quite a few. The USO shows were good. Yeah. The only thing is, you'd have to sit on these hard benches, and uh, it was all outside. Nothing was uh, there was no no enclosures. Did you feel that you were properly uh, clothed for the climate? 
taking it up to wear much. Right. Oh, yeah. They allowed you to oh, sure. oh, yeah. skimp on clothing. Man. Oh, yeah. yeah. The, the evenings were nice, though. I mean, it was, it, it get down to a comfortable, don't forget, we had no fans or nothing there. Mm -hmm. And the tent, all we had in the tent was just a screen to keep the mosquitoes out. But other than that, uh, uh, it was uh, it was it was comfortable, you know. And do you feel that had you gone into combat where you had to defend yourself, you would have you were properly equipped for that? Oh sure. Yeah. Oh yeah. We had a lot of the training we had. Sure. Yeah, that's good. Could you tell me what uh, some of your most memorable experiences? In what? In the Pacific. Well, I, I told you the, right. uh, you know, the, the collision and the, right. uh, and uh, uh, of course the, when I, the only, when I first arrived there, I ended up with the, uh, the appendix and I had a, oh. oh yeah, and they had to rush me to the base hospital there. And that was, that was an experience because they put me in, we used to call them the meat wagon, the ambulances, and the road was so rough that every time, and that poor driver, every time he'd go over a bump, he knew I was in pain. And all he'd tell me is, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I said, look, just get me there in time, will you? Because I didn't want it to burst. And uh, I stayed in the hospital that Christmas, that first Christmas I spent in the hospital, and when I wrote my family, I says, uh, well, uh, there's one thing I can say, I had a white Christmas. I was around sheets in the hospital. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's my white Christmas. And that would be the Christmas of what, what year? That was 43. 43. Right. Now, returning home, to the, tell me about your return trip home to the United States. Oh, it was nice. We yeah. landed in, uh, in, in Frisco, All right. and uh, the uh, Salvation Army was great. Yeah. They, they took care of us. They, uh, they gave us uh, 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 phones there to call home. Yeah. All expenses paid. Were you and discharged at that point? No, okay. no, no. Just yeah. to call home and tell, right. them, tell my, uh, my family that yeah. we arrived safe, you know. And uh, then from there we uh, we flew home, and uh, I was more or less a surprise for my folks because I didn't tell them when I'd be home. So when did you uh, when and where where were you discharged? I was discharged in the Fargo Building in Boston. Right. That where I was inducted. And where when would that be? That was in '46. Do you remember the month? May. I, I believe I got it in there. Okay. And what were your feelings coming home? Uh, well, I missed a lot of my friends, but uh, you know, it was coming coming home to to what? You know, you got to start over right. again. You know, you've been away from the family. You you didn't know what you were going to do for employment, and and you know, all that you know mm -hmm. sat in the back of your mind. But uh, it was just great to be home. That's all. What was the feeling of your family on oh, the return? Oh God! Oh, oh, the family just, uh, just great, just great to see me back safe, you know. Mm -hmm. And of course, my brother was uh, also. He went. Uh, I went to the Pacific. He went to the uh, Europe. Oh. Yeah, and he got home safe. So it was just great to see the, the both of us back. And then later on to the Korean War, my other two brothers went. Mm -hmm. And so I could say that uh, my family served uh, this country. I'd and, say so. And we were proud to serve it. How important was serving in the military for you? Well, I love this country. You love America, right. so you so you defend it. Right. Uh, that's that's the name of the game. Uh, you, uh, uh, if you want this to be a free country, you you see so much going on in the other countries that and they're killing each other. Over here, we, we have to defend this country so these people won't come over here and try to uh, annihilate us. How do you think that being a CB in particular affected the rest of your life? The reason I ask is because it's sort of known as for their can-do attitude 
And I'm wondering if that affected how you approached other projects in your life. I approach projects without fear. In other words, even up to today, mm. my children come over, you know, Dad, you should patent that. If I come up with mm. ideas, and where did I get those ideas? From things that I did in the Pacific with, the, with, the, with my uh, mates, you know? The different, different ideas we come up with, and of course, when you're with a great bunch of guys with so much experience, you pick up different ideas, mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's the way you go on in life. Have you ever patented anything? No, oh. no. I tried to on one, I, <laughs> I tried to make a, a, uh, a patent. I had a, I had a panel truck, uh, a half-ton panel truck, and every time we'd go out, it'd be cold. I, we'd, you'd have to heat the entire van mm -hmm. in order to get warm. And you know, the, the heater was not that uh, effective to heat that entire van. Mm -hmm. Even up to today, as you see those SUVs and all that, you've got to heat the entire van to warm up your, uh, your, your body on the front, you know, the driver and so forth. So I, I invented a, a shield. I put it a heat shield. Mm -hmm. And I, I rigged up a bar and I put magnets on the plastic and I I think I named it a, a heat shield, and I tried to patent it, but I guess somebody beat me to it oh. or something, and that went down the hill. So that's the only thing I ever patented. But uh, I like to putter around. I, yeah. I do a lot of uh, puttering around at uh, at the uh, at my home. I still work for the same company that I started with. What company um, is that? Well, uh, we used to make military hats mm -hmm. for the military. Mm -hmm. And I was the uh, supervisor of the cutting room there for 35 some odd years. And then when they moved it to Arkansas, in fact, we were the originators of the Green Beret. Oh. And they're still making it today out in Arkansas. Huh. So when they moved the plant from here, they turned the building into a uh, real estate building. Huh. And they asked me to stay on to manage it, and uh, it's only two miles from the house, and I, I love it. How many hours a week do you work? I only work about three or four hours a day. That's good. And if you call it work, I just go there and uh, mm -hmm. Be with people, yeah. you know. Is about I got a lot of artists in the building, yeah. and it's just uh, just to, to get up and get out, right. because I'm not a couch potato. I <laughs> cannot sit and watch TV all day long. That's right. not my lifestyle. I wanted to ask you, how do you feel about the difference in the way that World War II veterans were treated when they returned versus the Vietnam uh, Vietnam War veterans? when they returned? Uh, the unfortunate part was is they were not recognized as defending their country, mm. okay? In other words, even if they did have it in their mind, they never showed it. The only thing that uh, uh, the veterans coming back was the big parades and all that stuff, but uh, as far as uh, appreciating what these, what all these, even up to today, look at these, look at these Vietnam veterans, mm -hmm. how much they suffered. Right. Today, now they're starting to get recognized for all the, for all the uh, 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 bravery they've they've gone through, and how many were killed. People today, even the, even the, the younger generation today, they're not taught about what the veterans did and who defended and what makes this country the way it is. Mm -hmm. They don't know that. Right. These, these, my grandchildren, my children. I said, do you people realize what the, the uh, uh, who defended your country way back when? Mm -hmm. The thing they had to do is to get out there and, and, and 
fight and so forth and realize what it is to, to defend this beautiful country. Mm -hmm. They don't know it. Mm -hmm. Even They don't teach it in schools today. That's what they should do. The schools, they don't teach them about all these heroes and, and what these poor veterans went through. They don't teach them. And I'm surprised. I'm really surprised at the, at the schools, uh, all the schools, not just uh, in this area here, and the colleges and all that stuff. They should tell them what what these poor guys went through, what, what the, how much suffering, even up to today, the suffering they're doing, right. from Agent Orange and all those other, uh, the, uh, that uh, short Pacific War, and what these poor guys went through. So uh, that's the only thing. They should be, they should be uh, brought up to date and should be told on on uh, this beautiful country, why is it the way it is today? Because people like us and others today that defend it. Look at these poor men uh, that were in that that ship, that ship collision there, uh, that uh, ship that was bombed. Coal. 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 That's a shame that those, those, uh, those guys are down in that fire room in that fire engine room and all that, and down in those right. in those compartments, they don't ha they didn't have a chance. Mm. They didn't have a chance. They were just blown out of there. And uh, you know, people should uh, these guys go in there to defend this country, and and they have to suffer like that. There's no need of it. Right. Did you join the reserves when you returned from when you uh, no. after you were discharged? No or any veterans organizations? I belong to the VFW. VFW. And we have our own organization in Boston for mm -hmm. one of the men that passed away uh, that was uh, not that was uh, killed, the first one that was killed in the war. And they made up a, a, a group organization and I belong to that. And have you ever received veterans benefits? Oh yes. Such yeah, the veterans were good to me. And G the GI Bill? GI insurance. Bill, the, uh, on the job training. Yeah. I got all that when I, when I first started. What did you do with the GI Bill? What GI Bill, I got into the garment manufacturing. Oh, excellent. And uh, they helped me out on that. Yeah. And uh, I went on from there into uh, uh, as a cloth cutter. Mm -hmm. And uh, they hired me over here at Bancroft, and uh, I've been with them ever since. Yeah. Is there a thought or a memory you'd like to share um, with the community, or future generations, about your wartime experience? Uh, no, I just want to. It's it's an experience, and yeah. uh, it was that. That's all. It, 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 to to go to a, to go to uh, different countries that I would like to do. Yes. Uh, I would like to go to uh, Europe and travel. I I, I see all that on the on the uh, the channel box, and uh, I would like to go visit them just to see how other people in other countries live. Mm -hmm. You know. Is there anything uh, before we close the interview? Anything that I didn't ask you that you would have liked me to ask you? No, you did a good job. Oh, thanks. <laughs> did a good job. Well, I want to thank you for uh, coming in today. Oh, it's it a pleasure. A I think this it was is a great. Wonderful interview. I think this is yeah. great. I think I give you people credit, and uh, I want to thank you very oh, much for you. this for this pleasure. And uh, again, I love this town and. I'll stay here until uh, someone else takes me away. <laughs> okay. Well, thank okay. you so much. Thank you very much.